Amanda Bynes was on top of the world growing up as one of Nickelodeon's star child actors. So much so that after she was on the sketch comedy show All That, she was given her own show, The Amanda Show. I wonder how they came up with that name. We need a title for the show. What do we got? Well, we know it's a show. Aha, uh -huh, yes, I'll write that down. It was a show. Yeah, what should we call the show starring Amanda? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I got it. The sketch show starring Amanda. Brilliant. Oh my God. What about the Amanda show? Tom, I'm gonna be frank with you here. Hi, Frank. No, my name's not Frank. I'm just being frank with you. Okay. That's a stupid title, Tom. Yeah, dude, that's a pretty stupid idea. Okay. The Amanda Show was great. It was full of some of the best gags from my childhood, even more so than all that at times. Plus Drake and Josh are there before they became Drake and Josh with their own shows. So, you know, it's it's a win. And I could spend hours discussing all the sketches from the Amanda Show that I love, like Block Blister, Hillbilly Moment, Amanda's number one fan, Penelope Taint. Yes, Taint. You my website. Back to the homepage where you'll see tons of other Amanda clickables Upon. But we taint talking about the Amanda show today rather than talking about something within the Amanda show. Where am I going with this? Ah yes, Moody's point. A fictional multi-part parody of a teenage high school drama similar to a show like Dawson's Creek. This was a roughly 10 minute, seven part series that aired partial segments during the regular Amanda show. But this was during a crucial time for the show and Amanda Bynes herself. The show had its own slew of behind the scenes problems that didn't make it as easy as it seemed to produce as well as Amanda wanting to step more into bigger film roles. I don't wanna dig into all of that today, but what I do wanna dig into is Moody's point and find out what's the point of Moody's point. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Appreciate it. I know. I, I, it took so long to write that title. Part way through an episode of The Amanda Show, Amanda comes out to announce a very exciting project that she describes like this. You guys are here on a really special night because right now you're going to see something brand new and totally different. It's a show about a girl named Moody and a bunch of her friends and life and love and school and all that kind of stuff. And it's pretty funny too. So, okay, here we go. Everybody, Moody's point. And I want you to remember this. It will be on the test later. Damn it! The show starts off seeming like it will be a show just like any other teen drama out there and then this happens. You need to get this permission slip signed by your father or mother. And then this happens. And then this ha- you, you know what, yeah. It, it's clear to see that this show isn't to be taken serious. It's a very over the top satirical jab at said teen dramas. Everything is done to this extent. Like Moody over dramatically reacting to anything that reminds her of her mother, who is lost in a hot air balloon. I don't understand. No one will ever But it isn't just Moody that's this character. It's all the characters. Moody's friends like Misty, who gets upset over every little thing and usually says, what's, what's that, that supposed to mean? Or, you're so hurtful, depending on the situation. She takes everything you say literally and gets offended by it. Just like some people today. Ha, oh, that's a really edgy joke. There's Spalding, played by later to become SNL's Taryn Killam, who is the guy best friend who of course had a crush on Moody but never gets to express these feelings properly and gets to be the butt of every joke, usually resulting in him getting hurt and being the biggest simp for Moody. And I respect it. Then there's Brie. She's actually pretty regular for the show's standards. You have Sternum, who is this edgy, mysterious kid in school that all the ladies swoon over, and he becomes the biggest competition for Spalding as Moody falls for Sternum really fast as he does towards her. And of course, the best part of the show, Moody's 
father, who because of an anchor being dropped on his foot, loses his big toe, causing him to lose his balance and cut a piece of a glizzy off to replace it. Yeah, the show was kind of a trip sometimes. And by that I mean all the time. What made the show work was the surrealism of it all. Each episode would be filled with tropes that other teen dramas would take super serious, but then Moody's point would point out how dumb everything was and how silly and ridiculous the drama can be. From boy problems to friend issues to just navigating around the teenage landscape, the show shot out joke after joke, keeping the show moving forward without staying stagnant for too long. But again, none of this is serious. Kinda like this video. Now when put all together, the segments equal into a little over an hour, and watching it all the way through at once like this, therein lies the problem. Too much of a good thing can unfortunately be a bad thing. And I'll get back to this in just a bit. There still were some amazing moments in these segments that I love and vividly remember to this day. Like when the doctor comes over to Moody's house after she wanted to donate her toe to replace her father's, but it had to be replaced by someone who's a blood relative. But the doctor comes over to say that she switched at birth so she can't donate the toe, so then this happens. You're not Moody Fallon. amount of awkward pause after a serious moment, the Keemstar levels of popcorn, the ice cream, just a perfect scene. Mwah. And within that same episode, as Moody was about to meet her real parents, we have great writing like this. Hi, I'm a social worker. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Me too. I f***ing love that. Her parents turned out to be the Flying Wurthsbergs, a circus trapeze act, and Moody's real name is... Yolanda? Yolanda? Then the episode ends like this. I just want to tell all of you how much each one of you means to me and how much I'll miss you guys for the rest of my life. Are you all ready to meet the real Moody? Come in, Moody. And yeah. That's it! The show's final segment ends on a cliffhanger, with a to-be-continued posted up on the screen. The only thing was, though, that this would never be continued again! The Amanda Show was cancelled! What?! Maybe we should have called it that sketch show starring Amanda. As the cancellation was happening, it was clear that everyone involved knew that this was inevitable. And that's where Moody's point came in. You see? Moody's point wasn't treated as a sketch for the Amanda show. It was, however, treated as a test for audiences to see if they had a potential new show. Creepy Dan, <clears throat> excuse me, creator Dan Schneider went to Nickelodeon and legitimately pitched Moody's point as its own show. Yes, and there it is. It was the most in-your-face backdoor pilot we've ever seen. Similar to my video on All Grown Up and how the Rugrats had a backdoor pilot to that show in which it saw success, Moody's point did not. While the segments of the show within the Amanda show were a fun time, and I have fond memories of them to this day, the over-the-top satirization of high school dramas only worked in this fashion, these short segments. If you were to expand these segments into a full 22-minute show, it most likely wouldn't work. Rather than a lot of fun for a short amount of time, taking the premise and stretching it out would make it almost exhausting to sit through. The amount of nonsensical moments and dialogue make it fun for a brief amount of time, but any longer would overstay its welcome, and Nickelodeon felt the same way. Dan the Creepy Man Schneider would later find success with a similar school drama that was still a comedy but actually a little bit more serious and not satirical and that being Zoe 101. I'll see you guys on Friday with that video. So with all that being said, Moody's Point was shoehorned into a show that was on the chopping block to be canceled in hopes that audiences would cling to it and the network would pick it up as its own show. The hopes of creating something new for the Amanda Bynes era of Nickelodeon, a backdoor pilot that would take about roughly half of the Amanda show's runtime, almost as to solidify the final nail in the coffin for the Amanda show, just to try and make Moody's Point its own thing. And that was the point of Moody's point. This was a really dumb video.